Hello there and good morning, everyone, all you beautiful people. Good to see you out there. Uh, so happy to be here. So nature elements would have also worked, uh, but basically it's going to be designed and that would be great. Just making sure everything is good. Cody Bear gives, uh, yeah, get a thumbs up for uh, my shirt. Thank you, Cody Bear. I appreciate it. Just so you know, thank you, Michelle, for uh, saying audio and video. Good. That's fantastic. You know, it's delayed 30, 45 seconds. So when things go wrong, I don't know for like 45 seconds. Um, so that's the short of it. Um, and just so you know, I always have a spare stash of shirt or shirts like off to the side as backup because I change like three or four times. Just so you know. So we're going to jump in Illustrator, as I just mentioned, and uh, let's have some fun. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of buffer as well. So hopefully it is okay and I will make sure that this is off and um, I will check the um, status as well. Okay, cool. And Froja gets a thumbs up. Yeah, I'm getting some, some buffering. Hopefully that clears up, usually does within the first couple minutes. And uh, I'll just kind of continue on uh, because here I am in good old Illustrator. So let's go like a little more full screen. All right. Sorry for the buffering. All right. So let me just kind of continue on my merry little way if I could. I hope you don't mind. First, gonna grab some elements really fast to get inspired by. So you can see right in here, just grabbing a couple of things and a couple of scenes is the goal. We have even some of these leaves, branches. This is an olive branch right over here. Stream is healthy. All right, we should be back up and running. I hope so. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, Bobby Orlando, uh, I am doing good on this fine Friday. As you may know, we got Max coming up, Adobe Max, so sign up for that. Uh, also, if you're joining me elsewhere, Adobe Max, go to max.adobe.com. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. Um, and we're all kind of slammed with, I know I am, I'm slammed with Adobe Max content. So I was reviewing uh, Sneaks, just so you know, the other day, which was really fun. So that's why I was up doing till midnight, 2 a.m., that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so, but don't feel sorry for me because I did take uh, the afternoon and I did a little workout and everything. So, uh, all right, let's jump into this. I usually do this like you have your source images. By the way, when I say natural elements, we could also get like, you know, I don't know, I like birds. <laughs> But we could throw some birds in there too. So again, uh, looks like, again, these are just photos, but it's like, hey, we can go ahead and take those, sort of create that. We have some wings. We have this lovely bird right here, right? So there's a couple different things we can use. Doesn't have to be just like, you know, branches and things like that. Ooh, I love this as well. So we got a lot to create. We have our source images, right? We always want to keep that in mind. And uh, from there, we could either trace over them I usually embed everything right um, just because I don't want uh, to break the link to any of these um, but we'll kind of go through this process and yeah sneaks should be a lot of fun this is always like I'm always heavily voting for the illustrator the designery stuff because there's usually you know the design category which is like sort of illustrator photoshop visual design video and then audio so it's quite a few categories that uh you could uh that we have kind of coming in but yeah i'm a sucker for the design stuff and there are some fun design things coming that i'm excited about all right so uh, I'm thinking of creating this leaf. So this is how we do sort of take, and this goes for anything really, just like creating any sort of element. It's like, okay, how can we deduce this down to its like basic shape, right? And right now I'm thinking, okay, well, 
sample the green for one, okay? Um, maybe to make this look like uh, a leaf, I can rotate it. It's usually round on multiple sides, so it could be round on these outsides, right? And it's kind of tall, so it's kind of like this. And then we'll take this top piece and kind of pull that down. And now we have sort of the start of a lovely little leaf, as we can see. Thank you, Froja, for all the inspiration in emoticons, if you will. Um, have I met Keenan before? I have not. You think I'm rolling with that crew? No, man. I'm just working at home. <laughs> Trying my best. You know? I'm just surviving here, people. Okay, so that's what we have. We have the sort of initial, initial leaf. And we can add some other elements because we have all the veins to leaf as well. So uh, we can start to work with that. So we'll lock that down. I would love to meet Keenan Thompson. He's pretty awesome. I don't know if you guys have a favorite SNL character, but I think it's so hard to choose from. It's like, hey, you know, what era are we talking about? 70s, 80s, 90s? I don't know. It's like, I don't know. That's a tough one. So we're just drawing these little like veins out. It's pretty easy to do. Zoop, zoop. Don't worry, we're gonna make this super easy, really fast. I don't even know what type of um, uh, leaf this is, which I feel bad about, but I do know I want it to be a little bit more organic. So we can go ahead and curve that, uh, make the ends soft, which is what we're doing right here. And again, I didn't spend much time on this. I'm like, yeah, that looks fine. You know what, keep it natural and easy. Uh, man, that's Rick Adams, that's old school. Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I thought I was up on all the SNL stuff. So. Exactly, Norse. That's another way of just asking, how old are you? <laughs> Same as asking, like, what SNL character do you like? I liked Will Ferrell a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, Will Ferrell, when he was doing, and what, Sherry O'Terry, when they're uh, cheerleaders, I thought that was pretty hilarious. So, and like Smalik says, how is everybody doing? I hope everybody's well. I have this done, I have this leaf, it looks good. Uh, sort of this, this is maybe the start of something great. I'm gonna just kind of continue and make this whole branch. And again, we could still use like the, we could use basic shapes. We could also jump in and use the pencil or the pen. You use what's right for you. Heck, what do I know? You're your own boss, right? But we're gonna use a lot of these same uh, basic elements. So, and there's that. And for pencil, draw that in. Um, sometimes I want to keep this uh, stroke selected. So there we go. Sometimes I keep this stroke selected, sometimes I don't want it selected, right? When it's not selected, I'm not accidentally going to replace it, okay? But I could also change that because a lot of people like to redraw their lines. So you could double click on the pencil and right in here. It's like, even after drawing, go ahead and keep it selected. So what that means, like, when I'm right in here and I'm drawing, it keeps it selected so I can draw over it again, right, to get that perfect line. I don't know if you guys knew that, but just kind of redrawing that. I could always go down here and add some more, but that's basically what's happening there. Okay, zoop, zoop. We'll do uh, one more really fast. I to sample, N for pencil, draw that in again, keeps it selected, I to select that line again, and again, I'm always using the same uh, line for like the inner like veins, and I might even change it because it's looking a little too white, and I want it more, I'd like it more like, like a sort of washed out sunshine yellow sort of situation. So anyway. Checking in chat. Hello, I see Anika over there. Hello, Yazam as well. Um, from Malaysia, cool. Somebody from Bangladesh joining me elsewhere on, on Facebook, which is awesome. Let's just group that stuff together. Let's group this together. Let's group this together. All right, and then I have my three leaves. So yeah, 
Thanks for joining me. We have this kind of squared away, but what I want to do is I'm going to turn this into an awesome, you guessed it, I want to make this an awesome brush. I might even do a flower real fast. Let's do a flower because it kind of needs a little pop of color. So hey, let's go down here. Let's give this a little pop of color. We want these to be natural elements. I want this to be pretty organic, but it's purely a style thing. Sorry, my hair's kind of messed up today. Uh, so again, that's why I'm typically like using the pencil, right? Just hitting N for pencil and then drawing and just trying, maybe I'll even make it a little jaggy there on the end, right? So I kind of want lovely little like uh, petals like that. And maybe it's jagged on the end and organic and typically pretty smooth. I'll vary the colors of these because I'm still kind of gonna like, I'm kind of reducing this to its like basic appearance. And again, same thing. Um, here's the thing, like sometimes people mix styles and it doesn't work, right? So if I'm not doing outlines to things, then don't, ha don't have anything like have an outline. Uh, but if you're having little details, like add those little details that uh, are appropriate and like the right amount for um, what you're doing. So right in here, I'm just gonna add some little details. And again, each thing is gonna have like some lines like that. That'll look kind of cool. Bop, bop, bop. I hope it's cool. It's gonna be magical here in a second. You just, you just wait. You just wait, Annika. Uh, fresco. Yes, and yes, Jan Eric. Uh, Illustrator does look fun to learn. I'm really uh, dealing with a constrained palette. Ultimately, I'm gonna make this into its own swatch group. Uh, then I can like manually control, actually, excuse me, globally control, right? So we'll come over here. We'll, we'll actually just select this one, hit N. Keep in mind, it's always gonna remember my last used brush settings. So we'll draw this one out. We'll just change this color. You know what, let's just change it to that. Let's flip it, but flip it and reverse it. That's super light. Let's make it a little thicker. But uh, again, just made this line. So since I did all that work making this line, it's gonna remember it. So I'm gonna go over here uh, to my appearance panel. It's like, you know what? And I always show this by the way, like don't reduce every line back down to a basic black line. Like I'm some basic designer. No, use those yeah, last used settings because it doesn't reduce it back down to that basic appearance and then draw that out like so, okay? Cool, we have that done. Uh, we'll take this. Yeah, we'll do some magic to it. Who knows what we're gonna do yet, Betty? Um, yes, uh, thank you, Betty. You are exactly right. Like, does the pen work um, the same, uh, or the pencil work the same? Shoot, does it even, have I even used the pencil? Is there even a pencil? I'm sure there's a pencil here somewhere that I've never used. Um, uh, one way to kind of, if, you, if you're having trouble finding things, you could go to Customize Toolbar and the same goes for Illustrator, but this might be an easy way to peruse all of these tools off to the side, right? So that's something you can consider, kind of roll through and, uh, you know, find what you need to that way. There is a pencil tool probably uh, added in, uh, you know, 89 or something like that. Uh, anyway, all right, you guys get the idea. Over it, you guys get the idea. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm gonna take this, uh, this looks good, okay? I wanna go ahead and repeat this around. We, we can mix this up all we want. An easy way to do this might be using, and I'll turn off the background just so this is easy to see to use, you guessed it, we'll go into a radial repeat. So this is brand new. Yeah, the, definitely the, the pencil in Photoshop is raster. So that's the huge difference. And really it's, I think it's just the brush set to no, uh, gosh, what's the, the density around the edges. It's basically has a hard edge. So it's a brush with a hard edge. Anyways, okay, radial, bam, there we are we have our lovely radial repeat that we can kind of have fun with all day long. As I kind of move this around, looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, everything's kind of at an angle. It's kind of swooping clockwise. 
Uh, I could double click, jump in here, take this, you know what, and straighten it out like so. We could still edit that, jump like so, dial it in, right, jump back out. And uh, ooh, play with the radial repeat a little bit more. I like the number that I have here, right? That actually looks pretty good. Um, off to the side, and I'm sorry, let me change the highlight color because it's really hard to see this. Change the highlight color. So here we are, we can see off to the side sort of how many petals it has versus how few, that sort of thing. So kind of like something like that. And then we have our flower and you guys get it. You get it. You understand how all this works, right? Nika, hello. Muriel's like, fantastic. By the way, I've already like established my swatches. I want some nice, I want these like earth tones. So I actually already put this together, right? So these are kind of the tones I wanna go with. I was actually sampling from the flowers and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately like, I like having a kind of constricted palette and even it's not even that constricted. It's like, geez, Paul, 15 colors, what's going on? But again, this is gonna be a nice muted, um, I don't know, kind of a softer uh, gold as you can see. Let's do something fun, huh? That's a great idea. Hey, how about that? Hey, Paul, how about if you do something fun for once? All right. Uh, let me jump out. Let's just add this like so, because I want to give it some texture on the inside. So we can talk about making texture. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but something like this might work. And usually I have to make this much larger. So let's make this much larger. This is radial, right? So I'm going to have these little like, um, uh, half tone dots. So what do we do? We go down to pixelate and go into color half tone, right? Color half tone. This you're gonna have to play with. All these colors, all the excuse me, all these channels, which technically are colors, should be the same if you want it to be just black and white. And then this, we'll just change this to 20 pixels and we'll click OK and we'll see what we get. Ah, oh, nothing. It's too tight. So, uh, good thing is you don't have to keep on applying that. Just go to your properties panel. Here's the color halftone. We'll click back in here. We'll do 120. How come I'm not seeing anything change? You know what? I think I need a, for my gradient, let's double check. That needs to be white. So this was my problem. You ready for this, Sean and Alex? And like, hopefully everybody's taking notes and learning stuff. But the problem was I didn't have, um, it wasn't black and white. It was going from black to transparent. So it actually was working, um, but now it's working even more. So that's the situation. Make sure it's going from one solid color to another solid color. Now we can jump in, we can control this. Let's do, you know, we drop this down to 80. We might like this pattern. So that might be my pattern for uh, the inside of my flowers. I don't know, it's just an idea. It's just an idea. I'm not saying it's a good one, but we'll try it, huh? Uh, we'll rasterize this. Okay, so we'll take this, we'll rasterize it. This is what I do. If there's an easier way, like, let me know. I don't have a monopoly on knowledge in these apps. Uh, but I would rasterize this, and then I would just do an image trace of really just black and white. Do black and white logo, right? Uh, saying, hey, it's kind of a large image. Might take a second, Paul. Mm, didn't take that long. And there we go. Uh, keep in mind, there is still... It's, there's still that white there, so I gotta delete it. So expand, and then you usually have to ungroup, right? And here's the white, that's technically a white dealio, see? And then there's probably some more in here. Oh yeah, there you are. But now I have basically the texture that I want. Seems kind of drawn out, by the way, quite literally, because we're drawing. Um, but I usually just like create this once and then I could use this same texture in my design for uh, For anything so you could do do this a couple times uh, Did that make sense Steve? So but yeah, I just wanted like these nice little dots in here I, That's all I wanted. I just wanted something like that um, 
<laughs> Thank you, Eric. I called it. I don't know why. Yeah, I guess I do do that. Like, and by the way, my sister's a teacher, so um, I guess it's running in the family. But she's in a classroom with students that have to wear masks, and I feel sorry for her. She can't see all their cute little faces, although they are safe. All right, so we have that done. Let's take a look at our elements we've made so far, right? We'll turn off our source. And let's just kind of play with these two things just for kicks. For one, what we'll do, you know, again, yeah, draw out a line. Take that color. Actually, I don't even want to shift these colors really fast. Um, I'm glad you're taking the flower. Like, I have, I have many, I've already done a lot of this, by the way, so there's, like, it's going to go from 0 to 60 real fast. I've been really into, like, um, kind of modernizing this look. So, um, for this green fill color, I'm actually going to select that fill color and I'm gonna use like, I'm really into using like this teal because I think it just kind of modernizes it. And I have teal, I've just like made all these, called it moss, right? So like that. Uh, so here's what, here's where why I think this works by the way, in terms of like color theory. Because the short of it is I was using a primary color like green with a tertiary, a, a secondary, a tertiary color which is pink. Right, so I just made sure they were on the same level. And that's why I think this matches better, right? We're not pairing a primary with a tertiary anymore. Okay, so there we are, boom. Swatches, swatch -rooskies. Let's make sure we get that. In fact, we'll go, gosh, what are we gonna do, everybody? What are we gonna do? Maybe we'll go darker. Anyway, let's just, let's have some fun. We have this. Actually, we'll just keep these as our source. We'll move them down there. Duplicate them. Zoop. And play around, shall we? Let's play around, people. <laughs> Sounds. I'm sure that... Sound effects are getting annoying, so I'll knock it off, huh? But there we are, we're just kind of making what's soon to be a lovely little branch. And kind of branch, like branch out, why not? Uh, all right. <laughs> Bless you, you're too kind. All right, so we have this. We'll, well, again, I typically I'll, so now I need to draw like more of these little branches. So I'll select this. And luckily, since over here, I set this to just like, it's kind of like when I select it, I'm sampling all of those properties. All the, in the appearance panel, I'm sampling all those properties. So I'll usually click on it and then switch to the tool I want and make sure this is not selected at this point, but it remembers my last selected thing. But from here, I'll just kind of draw out these and then determine honestly if this is even the right, um, the right color, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of drawing that out. I don't know, it's fine. You know, this is not rocket surgery, is it? It's just fun times. Shift command close bracket just like in Photoshop will bring it. Oh, I had two there. Bring bring that element to the top. In fact, you know, let's just select all this. Shift command uh, open bracket. Bam. Send that all to the back. Let's make this main like stem thicker, right? Like so. All right, we got that. We got it going on. You get the idea, right? And uh, now we'll go ahead and have some fun and make this repeat and do all this fun jazz, okay? All right. Uh, oh. Uh, 
the phantasm style halftones. I don't know the phantasm style halftones, what those are, but they sound awesome, just so you know. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn this into a brush. So again, I'm gonna turn it into a brush. I typically like to create a, um, a bounding box, right? Uh, like so, just something like this, right? Here's my bounding box. I don't want this to appear in the final, so I'll just make it totally invisible. So it doesn't have a stroke, doesn't have a fill, but I'll also make sure this is in the center. So I'll take this, I'll take this, and I'll center it, shabam, shabam, right? So I'm just creating this bounding box. In fact, you know what, I'll just go ahead and change this to black just so we could see it. But from here, this is just kind of how I set up brushes. Let's go ahead and snap. Snap to, it should be snapping to my, I'll use grids, just so you know. So we could show grid. Here's my lovely little grid. We could snap to grid. And, uh, you know, honestly, what's my favorite shortcut? I don't know if I have one. It's really whatever tool you use the most, that's gonna be your favorite shortcut. Which ones do I use the most? You know, a lot of times I'll use V for direct selection. I don't even use it that much. So that's the selection. V and A, I'll use N for pencil. So I use N a lot. So snap into pixel, or excuse me, snapping to grid is what's happening. So I'll set this up and then I'll have another box. Let's make sure this is all snapped into place too. This is one of like, you know, you'll you'll thank me later things. As soon as you. Oh, wait for it. There we go. That is on the line. Perfect. Okay, set this up once. Let's draw out another one. Usually make this one a perfect square. Make another one down here. Just creating a bounding box for the head and the tail. Oh, why can I not copy this? You know what my favorite shortcut is in Illustrator? It is uh, option drag to duplicate. There we go, we have the head, the tail. Okay, so we just kind of keep those in mind. Take those, heck, we'll put them on another layer, right? And we'll lock it down, because we want to see them, or we could actually, you know, you could lock the individual elements. But you get the idea. All right, I'll be quiet now. You guys probably know how this goes from here. This one's still selected. We'll hit N, we'll draw again. We'll make the lovely roots. Kind of like that. Select all these, make sure they all go to a fine point. And guess what? We'll also reverse, at least this one needs to be reversed. I set up this shortcut as well, which is like reversing the path direction, right? So shift command R. Cause I found myself doing this so much like reversing that stroke. Boom, boom. We have the roots, the roots. Turning off snapping again, it's all about shortcuts. Boom, just turned off the snap to grid because it's not helping me line this up. So that's another shortcut that you you might learn. Some of these might be thinner. And uh, yeah, and by the way, today's full of master classes. We got uh, T. White, Jason Levin, uh, Howard Pinsky, and uh, Kyle T. Webster. 
doing their thing today. And that's what I want, right? So that looks good. Fantastic. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, I think Terry's going to be up next also with uh, what about, you know, daily creative challenges as well. Uh, looking at chat. Yeah, the reverse path direction is going to become so important uh, as I start to dive more into this, for sure, right? Especially for this, like let's let's see if this let's see if this angle is going to be pointing that right the correct direction. It's all about how I drew which direction I drew the path. Oh, I got lucky. That's great. But even then, uh, like yeah, maybe I'll kind of redraw this. See, I knew that was going to happen. Ooh. No, no, no. Let's just leave that like so. All right, so let's just do this really fast. Remember, this is going to be kind of near the top of this uh, particular... Particular plant. Why is... I think this is moving very slow for some reason. Okay, there we go. Boom, shaboom, shabam, teeny, tiny, little leaves near the top of this plant, like we're doing now. Let's grab this one, or maybe this one. There we go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Done. All right. Oh, Keita Jones, it's good to see you, by the way. Good to see you. All right. Cool. Okay, so I have this done. Um, remember, I have this bounding box. Because this is going to help line up everything. Just so you know, this is going to be a pattern brush in the middle, right? And for the ends, we have to have this as a swatch. So this has to be a swatch, and this has to be a swatch. All right, so we need to keep that in mind as we create this. The swatch is over here, so this is going to become a swatch, which is obviously a square, which is why I made it that shape. You can see all these swatches right in here. Technically, it doesn't have to be a square, but it's just, hey, I think it's just easier. Okay. From there, selecting those. Let's get rid of that black line, right? And now we can go ahead and take this and then drag it into our brushes panel. You can already see I have a ton in here. Click and drag it on in uh, right here. Boom. We're going to make this a pattern brush. Click OK. From here, this is like plant number nine for me, actually. We'll say, hey, this is how you should interpret the corners. Now, here's where we'd add the, like, the head and the tail, if you will. OK? So this, or the top and the bottom, or whatever you want to call it. So right in here, what do we do? Take this, we drag it to our swatches panel, okay? You could view your swatches panel, by the way. Yeah, it's madness. This is getting in. Look at all this. But um, yeah, you can view your swatches panel in a list view, which is going to be really handy because it's going to give me that list view when I select the head and the tail. So take this, this is plant number nine, drop it in there, and there it is. Um, don't click on it because it'll change your actual, you'll still have your swatch selected, you'll accidentally click on this and it's going to change it. Anyways, it's something you have to undo, but plant nine top or head or whatever you want to call it. Move that over. Here's going to be the tail, which again could be maybe a little bit more exciting. Plant nine bottom, and now we have that set up. Let me take a look at my pasteboard. Oh, that's funny. 
<sighs> so I usually, I'll, I'll work, by the way, you can turn off the, I called it the pasteboard, but the artboard. I usually turn off that preview. So like right in here, it's like, I could work on this little square or I can have this whole area to work with. So that's personally what I like and you get the idea. So there it is, that's done. You can use guides too instead of the grid. We have that done. Um, I wanna hide, I wanna clear all guides actually. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, actually this is what we need to do. We need to go back to our brush. Here it is, head and the tail. Starts with the tail or the bottom. So we'll go down to plant nine bottom, bam, there it is. See, I hope that's the right one. The color looks a little bit different, but I think it's just the size. Again, this lovely list view, plant nine top, boom. There we go. So it should all kind of connect. And by the way, I can sample a color. I really wish this worked outside of this, but let's just sample this green, it's gonna be virtually impossible to change the color of that. There we go. So Tins and Shades, so it's gonna change based on uh, this color right in here. So that sort of moss color, I can change it from moss to more of a bright green, whatever stroke color I have, that's what it'll change it to. Okay, we're done, we'll click okay, boom and uh, we can kind of start drawing. And sure enough, there we have our lovely, yeah, we just made a brush. Okay. You ready for this, people? Are you ready? Do you got your, do you have your weird blueberry coffee ready? <laughs> your weird blueberry honey coffee? <laughs> Do some of you guys like tour, like maybe it'll be like afternoon and you're, and then you get kind of bummed. You're like, oh, I, I, I had already had coffee today. I have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> you're like, oh, morning's over. I guess I got to wait for tomorrow morning for my, my fun coffee treat, which tastes like dessert. Anyways, we have this done. You can see what we're doing now. Cool. All right, so uh, this is the fun part, right? So we could take this and we'd say, hey, you know what? Let's like, let's even turn off this other stuff. New layer. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. But now that it's a brush, we can hit N. Um, you can use, I'm gonna use my lovely Wacom. Even though it's not, we can say, hey, oops, let's switch it. Oops. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, so like I mentioned, it's gonna take on the color of your swatch. So by usually it's, it's the moss color. We'll switch this back. And, um, but you can see the head and the tail. Again, we've learned how to reverse this because maybe for this S, we want uh, the roots to be down here, right? Seems to make sense. So we'll reverse it like I did earlier. Reverse path direction, boom, there we are. We could have it get thinner on both ends, which I think would be cool, right? So we could do something like that. That looks more like an S, right? Look at how elegant that is, so nice. Uh, Cody Bear, I got more for you. You ready for this, Cody Bear? I think you'll like this. Hopefully you're having fun. Hopefully everyone is having fun. I still have 20 minutes. This is great. Okay, so there we are. Um, maybe I'll, I'll write a little bit more, but uh, you know, maybe I like this style and this thickness. So we can go into, you know, you could do this a number of ways. I try to do it in one stroke. P, um, R, don't worry, I'm gonna fix a lot of this. I 
and then N and then G. Okay, not to worry, it's gonna get jammed up in parts, but we are gonna tighten all of this up, right? So again, we'll tighten this up. We'll make it look nice. It needs color. We haven't worked with the flower yet, so we'll do that in a second. Um, for some of these, I might need to vary the stroke uh, thickness. For this R, this R is it's pure chaos, right? We could simplify it. Maybe that's one thing I'll try uh, just by going into simplify, boop, dragging that down. Give me fewer points. Maybe that'll help help it and makes it easier to actually like adjust accordingly. Or what I can do is I could say, hey, you know what? You Let's use the width tool over here, right? I could actually globally take the stroke down like that. And that reads a little bit more like an R, right? But like, I might wanna just take it down and make it thinner right there. So I could use the width tool, come in here and then crank that down and make it thinner, say right there, right? So again, I'm just I'm just showing you tricks for making this like a little bit more legible in parts while still kind of keeping the, uh, you know, the fun, uh, you know, leaves in there and everything. And this is the biggest struggle you'll have is like, how can I change this and still, and then you want to change this stuff. You, you want this to be legible and still read as leaves. Okay, can you, guys get, you guys could read that. Can you read that? Tell me. Ooh, that would be fun, Norse. I like your idea. It will be. That is the goal for anything. Make it awesome-tastic. We want to reverse some of these, so we want this to be on the top. Um, what else? The roots are always going to be on the bottom. Let's reverse this one. Uh, you could hardly tell what the roots are, but you get the idea. T tell me, like, what's what's wrong with this I kind of want to know what's wrong with this it's like you almost need to step away and say hey what's what's working and not working you know and maybe it's just kind of a little bit of the layout and yeah we need the dot of the eye so we could do that boop probably use a flower there maybe all right anyways let's move on we have this beginning of what we want. Okay, so you ready for this? This is huge, and I'm so glad you guys are here, okay? Because we want to keep, the big thing is, we have to keep this. You got to hold on to this file, baby. You really got to, yeah, I got to dot that eye. Thank you. Um, you got to hold on to this, because all you could do with this brush at this point is you could jump in. Let's turn this on. And maybe we'll move this stuff around. I'm sorry. Let's move that over. Maybe we'll grab our text. Move it down. Say, so, hey, you know what? Um, these are no longer linked. You could double click on this and you could change some of these components. The biggest thing that you'll need to change in here is the size. Because you're not going to know what size you created this at. And you're saying, wow, compared to all my other brushes, this one's huge. Make it 50% the size, that sort of thing. Um, anyways, that's all. Um, but this is kind of cool. Let's try this and let's have me break this because, hey, when you break stuff, that's when you learn. Um, let's just, let's just, I want to see what happens when I do this. And I don't know if this is a good idea. I'm going to hold down the option key. The option key will replace the uh, brush or swatch or whatever, but keep all those settings. So let's hold down the option key. We'll drag it onto that first one and let it go. And that's what it does. It'll actually update it. This is fantastic. So if I do decide I want to put some little dots in here, let's do that. Let's put some little like berries. It just needs like a little splash of color. So uh, right in here, in fact, we'll like, we could sample from that guy. We'll just do some like little dots just to give it a little bit of color in here. We're like, hey, that's kind of what it needs. It needs some more randomness. These should be like different sizes, but you get the idea. 
I don't know. I'm just trying. Now it's looking like Christmas time. I don't know. So, anyway. Anywho. Um, so with that done, I've added those elements. Now I can hold down the Option key, drag it on top of the brush that I already made, and sure enough, it's going to keep everything else, keeps all my settings, click OK, and it says, hey, you know what? You want to update everything? Yeah, I do. Boom. We'll go back. I said yes, right? Didn't I say yes? Why didn't this one change? Did I? Am I using the right brush? Maybe I'm not using the right brush. <laughs> So we'll select it, because this is the one I was messing with. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. So yes, it is looking very mistletoe-ish. Uh, maybe it does not look like spring. It's, it's leaning more to like, this should be like a winter wonderland. Uh, so those little dots are appearing, but the issue is, is I have that color tinting turned on. So I'll just jump in there and I'll turn this off. I'll change this to none. Click OK. So that was the issue. Anyways, it's very, I don't know. Let's change this. Luckily, I have a ton more elements that I could actually use. A ton more flowers. So many. I have so many things, guys. I have all this. I've already done this stuff. Yeah, and this, these guys. Let's use this. Um. So yeah, don't mind me. We know this didn't work. I'm getting rid of it. I'm so sorry. We want straight up flowers. I already made some flowers. So here's some little flowers. Again, still using that same technique of the um, halftone dots, right? So let's just group that. We'll group this, we'll group this. Oops. Group. All right, so like this is kind of more what I want. Boom, make it, give it more springtime color. Kind of looks like, um, I don't know, reminds me of Easter. But there we go. <laughs> Fix it, Paul. Fix it. Option key. Drag. Replace. OK. Apply to strokes. Done. Zooming out. Oh, there we go. Let me show you some. Let me show you one better. You ready for this, Bruce? I, I want I want you guys to like pay attention to this. So it's looking cute, but you see that it's it's looking like a pattern. So I don't really like how it looks like a pattern. Right, I want these flowers to add some randomness. Maybe the the branch adds the structure to the letter, and then the flowers need to be the fun randomness to it. Right? So hey, maybe we don't do that. You ready for this, everyone? Let's take that off. Let's just kind of update this one more time. Bingo, bango, shabam. Right, we took out the flowers, and now what we'll do is we will create a random and again, we can do this many different ways. Okay, we could we want to make a random brush, and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna these will always be like a certain distance apart. There's uh, fine. Let's just do this. I'm gonna drag this flower into my library. This time it's gonna be a scatter brush. We'll click OK. Yeah, scatter this flower around. Ah, uh, random, random, random. Make it look random. Go the size. Don't get it too small. Maybe 30% up to 100, up to uh, maybe 200% actually. The spacing, 10 to 100%. Um, a lot of these, just so you know, you, you just have to play with it. We want to rotate it, right? You're, you're really not going to, you're not going to make sense of any of this until you actually see it on a stroke. So we'll click OK. Boom. There it is. Here's my scatter brush. Okay, so we'll zoom out. And let's just see how the scatter brush looks. Bam. There's my scatter brush. Right? Um, let's double click on it. And let's change the size. The size almost gets too big. So we'll just drop this down to 100% and apply. There we go. We got it. Boom. We got what we need. 
Okay? So we have that. Remember what, this is what we're gonna do. Um, we wanna do the same thing with this little, uh, lovely, um, peach flower. Okay, so I want those same settings. Just do that with a peach flower. So we'll take this, we'll duplicate it just by dragging it to the plus sign. Now we have two of this one. And based on what we learned earlier, we're like, hey, we could just option drag replace that graphic to make this new scatter brush. Now with this new scatter brush, sure enough, let's make sure it's selected, draw out that line. Now we have this new scatter brush. Um, oh, you're man. It's there's no time to stand up and move around. There's so much we could do. So, so this is the thing. Like now, I want to add it to these. I'll select all these letters. We'll go in here to my appearance panel because you could have multiple strokes on one. If I can grab this, on one object. So, um, let's just make sure everything's ungrouped. Is everything ungrouped? Oh, maybe they're all different. They're all, it's cause I messed with the R. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hit bam, bam. Let's just do that. Zoom out, ba -ba -ba -ba. these are all the same. Um, and let's add a new stroke on top of this one. And for this stroke, it's actually gonna be that scatter brush. So we'll go up here, we'll select it, and shabam, there we have it. And let's just kind of bring it down some. It's almost too much, by the way. Almost too many flowers, but you get the idea, All right? So we did that once, we'll add another stroke on top of that. This one's gonna have the peach flower, we'll select it, and we'll take that down in size two as soon as we see it. It's not spring. Why did I even do this? The root and the top are not in the center of the stroke. They should be. If I made my grid right, it should be like right in the center. The key thing is, does it line up, you know? Um, but anyways, there you have it. Um, we could turn off these other elements. And I just think this is really nice. But maybe it's just me. Throw a background back there. Make it darker or lighter. I don't know, it just needs something. Um, uh, reduce to basic appearance, because remembering those last settings. And again, if we take this darker, I don't know. I don't know, now, I, now I'm gonna be struggling with the background color and what I do there, just so you know. Uh, the legibility. So, so here's where I'd start to tweak the colors, but uh, the fundamentals are there, which is nice. Maybe we'll just do that. Why? Why does this even say spring? Jeez, we're in September. We're working on content for October. You have spring going on. Anywho, uh, by the way, I've already made a thousand of these other brushes. So now that I have like one minute left, I'll show you like a thousand other brushes. And some other stuff that I did. Let's take a look at this one. Just another example. Uh, let's turn this on. Zoop. So here's one that I spent like a little bit more time on. Um, Spring Valley. I don't know. Something. You guys get the idea. Uh, yeah, time to start a new project now that I got one minute left. But how powerful is this? Guess what? Let's do this. You ready? Command Y. Ah, uh, how simple is this? Do that, Fresco. Huh? Huh, Kyle T. Webster? Do that. Oh, I want to change it to Midnight Valley with a bunch of dead roots. I changed the brush. It's going to change it everywhere. Uh, I love the versatility of Illustrator. 
uh, if you can't tell. And uh, hopefully you guys liked liked this fine stream today. That's all. Even though it's not spring, and that's my big fault today. So sorry about that. <clears throat> what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Anyway. All right, everyone. Well, that's all I have for you. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, uh, Viesh, Mashab, Jeremy on YouTube, Alicia, Angela, Froja, Bruce. Appreciate all of you. Stick around. Um, I can make, I have a building brush. There's a thousand other things I'm going to do with this, but I don't have time. And I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me. Stick around. Day full of master classes. Um, an encore presentation of my Photoshop one uh, will be later on. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon. See ya.